Hi, welcome to Simone's Kitchen. Today we're gonna to cook up a tasty seitan dish. It's a Indian spiced seitan dish with greens. You might be wondering what seitan is. Seitan is a fantastic meat alternative. It's high in protein and it's made out of wheat. It's the glutinous part of wheat and the bran and starch are washed away and then you have the seitan, which is then uh, cooked in a broth to give it a nice flavor. And today, to make it really tasty, we're gonna, we're gonna deep fry it before we add it to our dish. You can see it even really looks like meat, doesn't it? It has a nice uh, chewy consistency, but it's a lot easier to digest than meat and very high in protein. Okay, the other things that are gonna go in the dish are these greens. Often I'll use Swiss chard, but today we're using bok choy. We're just gonna blanch the greens first. Let's go ahead and put the greens in the boiling water. I've just used the green part of the bok choy. I've cut off the white part, and I'll just use the, bok, the white part in a soup later. So I'll just push them under the boiling water, add a little bit of salt, And put the lid back on. We're gonna get the onions ready for sauteing. That's gonna give a nice sweet base to the dish. Just cut them in half from top to bottom and cut them in thin half moon. We're also gonna add some ginger and garlic, cumin, coriander, seed powder, um, a little chili powder, and we're gonna finish it with some soy cream. That's gonna bring the dish all together. It's a great dish for lunch or dinner. It's really tasty and satisfying. All right, so we're just gonna add a little olive oil to the saute pan. And go ahead and start frying those onions. Let them saute probably about five minutes. Get them nice and translucent, slightly brown, a little bit caramelized. Now just a little pinch of salt. That helps bring out the sweetness. You want to saute on a kind of medium high flame. If you notice they're getting a little too brown, then you just turn it down a little. While those are going, just gonna press in the garlic. Got three cloves of garlic here. You could chop the garlic as well, but I find you get more flavor out of the garlic when you press it. And you can start the sauteing with the garlic, but I find it gets a little bit uh, too easily brown, and you don't want the garlic to get brown. That ruins the nice flavor. Now we got a piece of ginger here. I've peeled it. We're just gonna cut with the grain in thin slices. Mmm, the ginger is so fresh and tender. It adds a lot of flavor. Once it's in thin slices, you can cut it in thin matchsticks. And that's good to go. Let's go ahead and add that in. Mmm, the smell. You know, that's all you have to do if someone's coming over. You just start sauteing some onions, and when you, somebody walks into your house, it smells like you're cooking up a feast. <laughs> it's a great smell of sauteing onions. Gets the digestive juices flowing. And turn that down a touch. Let's check on our greens. Oh, 
almost done. Just going to let them go a little longer. In the meantime, I want to show you how we do the seitan. So we're cutting it up into bite-sized pieces. It really has a meaty texture. Very satisfying, especially if you're doing very physical outdoor work or sports. So we have here half a cup of unbleached white flour and two tablespoons of arrowroot powder. That's going to coat the seitan and it means that when we deep fry it, it's not going to get oily. It'll just get crisp on the outside and it'll add a lot of flavor to the dish. People are worried about deep frying, but if you're using good quality oil, you don't burn the oil, then it's really a healthy and actually very dynamic way of cooking. So then you just put the seitan into the flour arrowroot mixture, put the lid on, don't forget about your onions. And they're getting nicely brown. And then just shake it. Shake it. And that just completely coats all the sides of the seitan. And it means that the oil can't get in. Here I have a strainer and a bowl underneath. I'm just going to get rid of the extra, the excess flour. And I have here a handy deep fryer. I'm just going to go ahead and pour the seitan into the deep fryer basket and let it fry. It needs to fry about three, four minutes. In the meantime, the greens are ready. And go ahead and take these out. Just use your metal skimmer to put them onto a plate. We'll let them cool a little bit before we cut them. And keep those onions moving. They're getting a little bit caramelized. That's good. They're getting close to done. All right. Seitan just needs another minute or so. Okay, the seitan is ready. So we're just gonna drain it on a plate with some paper towels. It's now, it's nice and crispy. It smells delicious. And we'll switch off the oil. So while those drain, we've got our greens here. They've cooled down just a little bit. I'm just gonna lightly chop them. I'm going to go ahead and add the greens. And the seitan to the dish. Now to add some more flavor, we're going to put in some mirin. That's a Japanese uh, rice wine. And some shoyu. That's a natural soy sauce. That's going to give it a meaty, rich flavor. Just keep your pan simmering. I'm going to add some cumin powder for the flavor of India. And some coriander seed powder. Also giving us that Indian flavor. And a little bit of chili powder. A little bit of heat. You could also use a fresh chili, that's also very nice. Combine everything gently together. Mmm. It just needs a little liquid and to simmer for about five, ten minutes. Get all the flavors mixed together, well combined. And then we'll finish it with the soy cream and some chopped spring onion. The 
The dish has been simmering a few minutes now. Let's just take a look and see how it's going. Hmm, it's smelling really nice and it's looking good. I'm just gonna add a little more liquid. You just want it to be nice and juicy and you wanna make sure it doesn't stick on the bottom. Just let it simmer a few more minutes. Okay, so I think the dish is ready. Let's have a look. Oh, it smells good. I think it's good. I'm just gonna turn it all the way down. I'm gonna add a little bit of soy cream. This is a great non-dairy creamer and wonderful for cooking. You can also get a, a rice or oat cream. And they work really well for making creamy soups or creamy dishes like this. All right, we're gonna just serve it into this dish. This is a rich, satisfying dish. No one will be disappointed with. Um, gonna add a little bit of fresh pepper. And fi finish it with some chopped spring onions. Voila, the dish is ready. You can even garnish it with a little more cream. Looks good. And tastes even better. For this recipe, you can have a look on the website, simoneskitchen.com. Thanks for joining us today, and I look forward to see you again soon in Simone's Kitchen.